Hello everyone, welcome to Code Enzyme and in this video we will discuss the A, B, C, D problems from the div 2 status 119 code ship. Now before starting this video I would like you to hit that like and subscribe button as majority of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel and it doesn't cost you anything but it will help me a lot. So thank you and now let's start the uh, and now let's start with uh, the first problem that is cookie day. Okay, now let's first read the problem statement. So we are given n cookies and uh, okay, so we are given n cookies and the mother wanted to give some cookies to k her k children and she did and she decided to distribute cookies of a single type. So we want to select a single jar and then distribute all the cookies in them and each and each child should receive at least one cookie. Okay. And the child should also receive, and everyone should receive equal number of cookies. Okay. So basically it is pretty simple that if I have, let's say n cookies and k children, then I will have integer division n by k times k. So every child will get n by k cookies. Okay. Uh, right. And if, uh, so the total number of cookies that will be given is n by k times k. And the number of cookies that will be left will be n minus this number. Okay. And we just want to take the minimum of this in the whole array. So that is the approach to this problem. And uh, this is the code. So first we are taking n cookies. Okay. Let me just uh, take the full screen. And sorry today I won't be live coding it. But uh, as the contest is still running, I don't want to resubmit my solutions. Okay. First I am taking a very long integer as my, as my answer and for x by k greater than 0 because I don't want to give 0 cookies to any children so and then I am trying to minimize the waste and if my minimum is long long max then I am simply printing a minus 1 so I hope you were able to understand this and if you, if you did kindly like this video and subscribe to the channel let's move on to the next problem so next problem is another good uh, another good string and this was kinda good problem now let's first read the problem statement a string is beautiful if all its characters are the same. For example, a, b, 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 a, a, a are beautiful while a, b and try are not. Okay. And uh, okay, I did it in a very tedious manner using a stack and queue. So it is a purely an implementation based question. So I mean, let's say we have. Okay, uh, let me just clear the page. So let's say we let's try to discuss this uh, test case and from this you will be able to solve the problem a n n n and uh, c c okay n n and c c hmm. so what I did was I made a stack of two integer of pairs so first I will store a character a and one okay then I am putting this next character n n n n one and when I go to the next character if I will check if the top of the stack, the first element of the top of the stack was equal. If that was equal, then I will put plus uh, plus one to the top. So it will become n comma two, and then n comma three. Now since I'm putting another C character, I'm also maintaining a max value. So max value is currently three. Now I'm putting another C character. So this will become C comma one because these two were different. Then it will become C comma two, then C comma three. And I'm taking the max every time I'm putting something. And next time I'm adding two more C's. So it will become C comma four, uh, C comma four. And once this is C comma four, my max value will change to four. Uh, so I, I, I'll print a four here. Uh, so like that, we can solve this problem using a simple stack. Uh, I mean, there are there might be various implementations to this, but that's what came to my mind and I did it like this. So I will just show you the code. So this is the way I am first making a pair of character and stack, uh, character and integer. And then first I'm creating the stack of this whole string like this. So whenever the, uh, either my stack is empty or my stack dot dot first is equal to the current character. Then I'm, uh, if it is not equal, then I'm adding this, the current character in one, like I did here. If these two were not equal, then I'm adding with a one. Otherwise, if they are equal, then I'm simply adding a plus one and then pushing it to my stack. Then I have to print the, my, uh, the max value. Then I can keep taking the X input and do the same thing like this. Okay. 
so that was the code and now let's move on to the next problem okay now let's see the next problem k odd sums okay let's first read the problem statement we have uh, an integer n and k and we need to construct a permutation p such that there are exactly k indices for which pi plus pi plus 1 is odd okay now one thing we know is that uh, even plus an even number is even odd plus odd number is odd and even plus odd is uh, odd i mean sorry yeah, odd plus odd is also even and uh, even plus odd or odd plus even is odd right so we want to make odd and even pairs so the actual values of the array don't matter what matters is the parity of the numbers so we want to create odd and even pairs now let's say if my k is odd if my k is odd now one thing is uh, and i'm making even and odd pairs let's say if i have one even odd pair so what is k k is the number of pairs of pi plus pi plus 1 equals to odd okay so this is giving me k equals to 1 right what if i have two pairs even odd even odd or let's take odd even odd even instead of even odd because that is what i did in my code uh, so not to create any confusion let's say we have one odd even pair so this is giving me uh, k equals to 1 then let's say we have two pairs so odd even odd even this is giving me three pairs right what if i had more than this so odd even odd even odd even so this is giving me five so basically if i have n pairs so this will give me 2n minus 1 as my k right so i hope you were able to understand this now uh, one thing to note here is that if i had some odd even odd even pairs okay and if in the start i will append many odd numbers and in the end i will if i append many even numbers the answer does not change right so if my k is odd this is the solution first i want to make some pairs such that uh, i achieve my k as the answer then i can append the rest of my odd numbers to the start the rest of the even numbers to the end of this and this is my answer but what if my k is even if my k is even then i can say k, let's say k minus minus first i will decrease one value and then i will do the same thing this whole procedure and find uh, so this and make this array so so this will contain k minus 1 uh, uh pairs such that pi plus pi pi plus 1 is odd right and now what i can do is i can shift one odd number to the end right now if i shift one odd number to the end this will make one more pair and this k minus 1 will become equal to k so this is the approach and let's see the code so first thing i am doing is i am making two arrays of evens and odds so these are the two arrays and now i am adding all the numbers from 1 to n in these arrays if my k is 1 then i am simply uh, adding odd and even pairs alternate and then till my odds are empty i am pushing it to the front of the uh, pairs and since i am using dq it allows me to add from the front or back in big o of one time and then till my evens are empty then i am appending all the even number to the ends else i am doing k equals to k by 2 and uh, uh, i mean the same thing like for the odd case and then i am shifting uh, i am saving one odd number that i can put to the end of this array right so if uh, then i am adding this number to the end of the uh, in that i am just adding it to the last uh, as the last element then i can simply print this whole thing and that is my answer let's see the next problem and if you were able to solve this kindly like this video and subscribe to the channel let's see the last problem that is unlike gcd and lcm so we have unlike gcd and lcm yeah so we are given integers n and q and we want to perform queries uh, we are also given a positive integer p and we want to find the number of numbers such that this might occur Uh, so this uh, gcd of x and y to the power p is equals to lcm of x and y okay so we have two numbers uh, we are given x and p and we want to find uh, the number of numbers y such that this occurs so one thing is 
uh, one thing we can do is let's write the prime factorization so we have 2 to the power let's say x is 2 to the power, to the power x1 and uh, times 3 to the power x2 times 5 to the power x3 and so on okay let's say y is 2 to the power y1 times 3 to the power y2 times uh, 5 to the power y3 and so on the prime factorization so what will be the gcd of x and y gcd of x and y will be 2 to the power 2 to the power uh, minimum of x1 comma y1 into 3 to the power minimum of x2 comma y2 and so on and similarly the GC lcm of x and y will be the same thing just we will take the maximum in this case x1 comma y1 and so on okay so what i can say here is that uh, uh, the gcd that have uh, to the to the power minimum of x1 comma y1 right and in the lcm side we have to the power maximum i mean any prime number not two i mean like that so maximum of x1 comma y1 right uh, so what i can say is that uh, and this i am doing to the power p and these two things should be equal so p times minimum of x1 comma y1 is equals to maximum of x2 comma y2 okay so this is the equation that i got so obviously one of these will be small or uh, greater so let's say uh, let's say for the first case case 1 uh, x1 is small okay so if my x1 is small then p into x1 is equals to y2, y1 uh, this should be y1 right okay and from this we can say that answer always exists obviously if i have two numbers then i can obviously multiply these two numbers and there will always exist a y such that this condition holds case 2 if uh, uh, y1 is small then we have p times y1 is equals to x1 and this only occurs when what x1 modulus p equals equals 0 right so obviously i can uh, always get one answer but uh, i will be able to get two only when this condition holds the power in the uh, the power of x1 uh, the prime factor uh, the power of x1 modulus p should be equals to 0 and if this is the case my answer will be, will get multiplied by star equals to 2 okay and now i can simply calculate this and print the answer now let's see the code uh, sorry i am going a bit fast <sighs> but first uh, what i am doing is first i am making uh, first i am finding all the prime numbers and since my ai is only going till 10 to the power 9 i only need to calculate the prime numbers till 3162 that is the square root of 10 to the power 9 so we first time calculating my square uh, the prime still uh, this number okay next thing i am doing is uh, this is a function to get the divisors basically the primes and uh, the power of primes so this is giving me the prime prime factor the prime that is dividing and the power uh, that is uh, in present in this number okay so first time calculating that of my x value and then for every p if my p is 1 then obviously the answer is 1 it will uh, you can check it by hand uh, and then i can continue otherwise let my answer be 1 and uh, uh, i i said that only if this case occur, I, one one answer will always exist but if this is occurring then I, my answer will get multiplied by 2 so for every prime number that is a factor of this i have to check if the power is divisible by p and if that is the case then my answer will get multiplied by 2 take the mod and print it so that was the code and i hope you were able to understand this i know i went a bit fast but i wanted to make this video very quickly so uh, if you were able to solve these problems kindly like this video and subscribe to this channel i will see you guys next time thank you